Hey everybody, Zane Banks here. And uh, today I want to talk about rhythm or time as it's also known, which I think is probably the most important aspect of playing in a band or any kind of ensemble based music. If you got bad time, then you don't have a gig. If you play a wrong note every now and then, look, that's cool, you know, we're all human beings. I play wrong notes all the time. You get better at hiding them or at least moving on from a mistake. But essentially playing a wrong note, either a splat or a misplaced note, is like dropping a pebble in a stream. You know, it's a moment in time. If you keep doing the same kind of mistake, then obviously that's, uh, you know, you're being told something. You've got to go and address a problem in your technique or, or whatever it is that, you know, is causing that issue. But time is the really critical thing. If your time is bad, you just won't get booked. You know, if I, talking about the band that I run, if I book someone for a gig and they come along and they, you know, they've spied a note for whatever reason, I don't really care. You know, it's, it's fine. Like I you know, play with good musicians, everybody does it and it's not going to ruin the gig. But if someone has shaky time or they have inconsistent time or they have bad harmonic rhythm, which is something I'll get into in a little bit, then that has the ability to disrupt the groove and the flow of the entire band and you won't get another gig. I wouldn't book you again. So it's a thing that I think that we, we look at rhythm, people talk about groove, but I don't know if they necessarily analyze a lot of the sort of intricacies of rhythm. And I just want to touch on some of them here, give you a couple of examples of things you can do. Most people are going to have some kind of rhythmic weakness that when put under stress, they're going to have a tendency to go one of either ways. You're either going to tend to slow down a little bit or you're going to speed up. I'm more on the speeding up thing. I need to have someone pull back the reins. I get excited, I get the adrenaline kick. Then I have to think really slow and really focus on my breathing to just like relax myself. Otherwise, I, like I don't need any encouraging. I'll just be... So I have to think slow. If you're someone who tends to slow down in things, then I think you need to kind of artificially sort of put a bit of pep in. But what I would encourage you to do is, is listen to a whole bunch of different genres of music and get a feel for where people sit on the beat. So if we have four beats in a bar, if you imagine each beat of that bar, you could zoom in with a microscope and there's you know, a beat goes from being, you know, like this tiny little sort of note or, you know, line on a tab to having its own sort of geography. And if you look at uh, certain things, like say Neo Soul, which is quite popular at the moment, a lot of those musicians tend to play right on the back part of the beat. Like it's almost lagging. So you get that sort of rolling egg groove. There's, you know, like a hump in the middle of the bar. You almost don't think they're going to get over it, but they do. And that's what kind of adds to that slightly wonky, but really, I don't know, like this intoxicating groove when you hear guys laying it down on that. Contrast that with, say, like a Buck Owens groove, that like Tic Tac Bakersfield sound. They're sitting right at the front of the, uh, the groove. It's almost like a drill sergeant in a Jeep, like behind troops that are marching. Like you, you just don't slow down. You get that in bluegrass music as well, where... The mandolin player, particularly, who's doing the chop on two and four, is just, it's almost nudging into the next beat. Sometimes it's so early with the, uh, the chop that, uh, yeah, it's a real incentive not to slow down. So the thing that I invite you to do is to really just examine, like record yourself and maybe put on, like if you're doing a garage band, put on the click track, try and play along with it. And then have a listen. When you listen to yourself back, take the click track off for the first time. And just see if you can detect any rhythmic inconsistencies in your playing or your lines. And if you can't, then put the click track on and just see whether or not it matches up. Playing with a metronome is a really good thing. Uh, I would encourage all technical work, you do it with a metronome. You can grade, you know, how fast you're playing. You can also look at your improvement. And you can make a metronome groove. So if you set a metronome, so it's just... We could think of that as one, two three, four, but you could also imagine that this metronome click is the two and four, and then it slings. One, two, three, four, ding, 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 ding. Now it really grooves, right? It's just like the hi-hat. Or just like one, 
two, three, four. Feels a lot slower like that. Two, three, four. So much of rhythm is a mental thing. If you can't hear it in your head, you're not going to be able to play it. So what I used to do a lot of when I was a kid is I would sit there when I was doing something like picking practice. Rather than put my metronome at lots of high tempos, I would put it on just one tempo. Say, for example, it's just like that. And I'd practice doing different rhythmic groupings. So I might start by just playing on each beat. Like that. Then I might do eighth notes. Like that. Then I practice doing eighth note triplets. So I can do, tap my foot now. Dun, 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 dun. And sixteenth notes. Then fives. So fives are interesting because you can do them three ways. Or conventionally three ways. Either just straight five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. You could do it two plus three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, three plus two, one, two, three, one, two, one. Two. Doing that's really good for your picking and mentally you've got to hear it first. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, four, da, 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 Making sure it's even. Or you get da, ka, 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 da, da, ka, ka, da, ka, 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 one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Or one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. And then going on into six, which can be done two plus, you know, two lots of three or three lots of two. So. seven and everything and without moving the metronome all of a sudden you're starting to get into very high tempos and it's really good mentally for you because you can work on doing those different rhythms and it's very good too to also practice just you know articulating your mouth the different things going between it so you might get triplets then so i'm going to do like a triplet semi quaver quaver so and just instantly changing between those different things and that's what you hear in plays when they're really tight playing great rhythm Particularly bebop players, Charlie Parker is fantastic when he does his 16 note triplets. He'll be playing an eighth note line. So that's a groove. Should be the and then he'll throw in a triplet. And also playing really great syncopated lines that just fill into those silent gaps. Just hearing that, mousing it. You know, people might think you're crazy, so maybe don't do it on the bus. But I'm always doing stuff like that in my head. I'm hearing what I want to play. Uh, like, this is the engine room. This is, this is the computer up here. You just have loyal foot soldiers that do the job for you. The other thing, too, is when you're playing with musicians, trying to get an understanding of how other people count. You know, everybody has, as I said before, they're either going to sort of rush or they're going to pull back. So a really good example, we'll do this here as a group, what you're going to do, get together with your band members and you're going to sit down and you close your eyes and you're going to give them a count of a whole bar for nothing. That's just going to give them an idea of what the tempo is. And then you're going to count in your heads to 17 and you're going to clap on 17. And that would be the equivalent of four bars of silence, you know, four bars with four beats. So let's try it here and I'll count you into bar for nothing. And then we'll try and clap and just see whether we're off. And this will reveal who rushes. Like ideally, you should all clap at exactly the same time. But I doubt that's going to happen when we do it. I doubt it's going to happen when you do it with your band. Over time, you get much closer. So let's try it here. Eyes closed. One, two, three, four. So I might have been slightly off, slightly fast. In order to really know, you'd have to record yourself with a silent click track and you could see where everyone actually lay. But at the end of the day, it's about the group being able to count together. This becomes much, much harder when the tempo is slower because you've got to subdivide. So if the tempo was one, two, three, four, in my mind, I'd be thinking one, and two, Three, I'd be breaking the bar up into small bite-sized chunks that I could count and measure the distance between 
because there's just there's a lot of guesswork in that one two so subdivision is a really important thing at slow tempos i find it's physically hard to play at high tempos and when you're in like insane high tempo territory like 300 beats a minute then there's almost no time between beats so you're on a knife's edge between the balance of being in time and out of time is tricky but generally speaking i'd say playing at much slower tempos is harder than playing at like moderately high tempos because there's just these vast it's like the grand canyon between each beat you know um, another thing is just sort of really being aware of emphasizing different aspects of a bar so if you emphasize the one and the three they're the strong beats of a bar or four and that's typically going to be when a bass is going to play and it's also going to be when chords change if you have two chords in a bar which is usually what happens in chord progressions the two and four are the light beats they're the ones that the hi-hat plays they're the ones you click your finger when you're going to swing and realizing that the emphasis on those two different beats has a dramatic impact on the groove. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to, I'm going to clap on one and three, and I'm going to go to two and four, and I'm going to go back to one and three. I'm going to keep the tempo exactly the same, but it'll feel like one of them, like I'm plodding along, carrying like a heavy backpack, and then the next one's just going to feel like I'm sort of, you know, in a stream that's just carrying me with the current. And then it'll feel again like all of a sudden I'm in quick center. So this is one and three. One, two, three, four. Then I'm going to change. Yeah, I really grooves. And I'm going to go back to one and three. And it really sort of feels firmly grounded and a bit slow, and yet nothing's happened to the tempo. So that's something you just got to hear mentally. Funk music, straight rock music, straight feels, all that stuff, they emphasize the one and the three. So if you're gonna count, you're gonna one, two, oh, uh, two, three, four, dum, dum, ga, dum, gu, gu, ga. A great example is the intro to Fortunate Son. It's like one of the heaviest straight grooves we've ever heard. You know, ga, chi, 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 ga, chi. And even like funky music, you know, you can imply a swing feel, like if you look at the, um, you know, a lot of the sort of swings. There'll be sort of swung sixteenths over a very straight sort of feel, uh, as opposed to like a swung sort of. So just hearing this stuff in your head. If you've got a count in a band, then it's up to you to hear it. You are the leader, and like a conductor in an orchestra, you have to be able to envisage everything. Otherwise, your band's going to fall apart. So I think really thinking hard about the time, listening to different musicians, hearing how they count, hearing do they sit back, do they arrive at things late. You know, guys like Willie Nelson and Bob Dylan, the older they've got, the the more flexible their time has got, right? I really like it. You know, sometimes you'll hear those guys singing and they'll wait back so late, they're almost like a beat or a beat and a half late starting a phrase and then they'll kind of cram things in and and they do it in such a unique way that I don't mind. If anyone else did it, it would probably sound pretty, pretty average. But they have this charming way of doing it. It's very nonchalant, like, don't rush me, I'm a boss um, way of doing it. But it's an interesting thing to listen to, uh, to compare, you know, like a, a Dylan version of, or well, Dylan doing a version of one of his songs now as compared to like back in the 60s. So just listen really carefully to time, uh, really monitor your own time, record yourself as much as possible, play with the metronome, play with a drummer. That's a really good thing to do. Just, you know, if you've got a drummer who just wants to sit on a groove, you try and lock in, play against them, try playing with a bass player. If you are a bass player, then you really need to be doing a lot of time with the drummer because you guys are the solid foundation and engine house of any band. And guitar players, I think sometimes we do ourselves a disservice by thinking we just float on the top and do all this fancy stuff. But if there's no rhythmic correlation to what's happening underneath you, it's just nonsense. Great players are great rhythmic players. Remember, rhythm is king. If you've got bad time, you're not going to get a gig. Simple as that. And uh, it's, I think, the importance of it really cannot be overstated. So look, thank you for tuning in. I'll be doing more of these videos. This is Doctor's Appointment. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions or you want me to talk about anything specific, please shoot me a message. I'd be more than happy to chat about things. This is just for guitar, gear, theory, harmony, you name it, we discuss it. And 
please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you know uh, when the next video is coming up. Make a donation if you'd like. And uh, follow us on Instagram, Rev Dr. Z. And I'll catch you guys next time.